got forensic labs, various forensic labs, that is privatization. We have a motto that is public and private partnership. Therefore, we used to take shelter from Mr. Alok Gupta. We used to take shelter from the Asian School of Cyber Law, where also forensic labs are there and various other forensic labs are there, that is privatization. I request that all should be rationalized because they serve a very, very good purpose for our country, that is after the pre and post events which are being happening, they work on that issue. Forensic labs are very material for us under the Information Technology Act. Now proceed another. Subject to the laws of that state. 
So that, that's what happened in Calder versus Jones. Now this is something which we try to follow in India also. There have been debates over jurisdiction. But by and large India says whenever somebody is doing a crime, sitting abroad, he may be of any nationality, he is subject to the Indian laws, he is answerable to it. Now, see, for, for, for instance, let's talk about uh, when, we, when we talk about from jurisdiction to, uh, you know, say, ODR at the moment. Jurisdiction has become a non-existent issue to a certain extent in cyber law. Why I say so is litigation. Who, for example, if you buy a camera online <coughs> from another uh, customer based abroad, he sends across, he, you know, that their orders placed and monies have been paid through maybe PayPal and you don't get the supply, what do you do then? You fight over it or you file a case, it's too petty an amount, right, to file a case for. So then, what do we do in this case? There have been on eBay, sites like CyberSettle and other, uh, you know, ODR service providers, online dispute resolution mechanisms through use of software or mediation or other technologies which, which allow you to bypass the jurisdiction question. So, it is neutral, arbitrator neutral panel. We see that very functional in the ICANN domain and dispute resolution policy. If you have a domain name on a, you know, domain name is what? It's just a name which you use to put an IP address, like a website address, a numeric address on the computer, on the web. So, it's an easy to remember uh, domain. Domain name is an easy to remember that, that particular numeric address. Now, there are fights. Marksandspecials.com. Uh, somebody, you know, has a similar name. Marks, instead of writing A and D, just writes N and Spencer.com. So it's a deceptive similar name. Now, what happens in that? If it is a deceptively similar name, and the, the person who has registered it has registered it with a bad faith, malice, or a malified intention, and he also has. Uh, you know, uh, no legitimate reason for registering it. Now, such domain names are subject to the ICANN. If you if you agree to the ICANN domain name dispute resolution policy, you can within say 45 days solve this whole problem through appointing a neutral panel of arbitrators. The ICANN policy is adopted by WIPO and many other accredited registrars, and they are supposed to you know administer this policy and millions of domain name disputes have been resolved through use of this, this particular uh, <coughs> policy. So we, we in cyberspace have created a planet in itself. It is a virtual world. I was taking a workshop at DBS one of the days and I asked the child, uh, where do you live? A very simple question. He told me you live in cyberspace. 80% of the time, you wouldn't believe the children today, they are living in the cyberspace. And it's so very important for us to educate them on what are the implications. Uh, in one of the cases I always cite there is the Adnan murder case. I'm sure you've all seen how a child of businessman, he was on uh, Okut and he was just surfing the net. He just, uh, you, met, you know, met a girl called Angelina who called her for, uh, you know, meeting her outside. And he goes and meets the stranger and he's murdered by his own gang of friends, group of friends. So this is what is happening today, how important it is for us to understand the IT and the implications of, you know, IT here today. Now, I also want to touch on, uh, when we move away from the point of jurisdiction and uh, crime, when we talk about crimes, a lot of crimes which were not there in the IT Act earlier, but have been now incorporated by the amend amendments made to the IT Act in 2009. Now, uh, things like cyber defamation, uh, Sending offensive mails. One of the clients, what they did uh, in London, uh, one of my clients had this problem. He was, uh, you know, repeatedly getting SMSs from India from his brother who, who had a grudge over him for his personal property. Sending offensive mails uh, to him, sending offensive SMSs on the mobile phone. I like to pause here. I want to ask the audience, how many of you really think? Cell phones are covered by the IT Act. Please raise your hand. I, I want an interaction right now. How many of you really feel? Just 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 
I, I must say, uh, congratulations, you're right. You're right. Cell phones are covered by the IT Act. Any devices, communication devices like cameras, uh, you know, even uh, any iPods, which can be attached to the computer or used as a therapy, they are all under the IT Act, covered by the IT Act. So with the help of that section 66A, which is in the IT Act now, we were able to lodge an FIR against the person who was sending these incriminating mails or offensive mails to my client in London. Now this is possible. We also have other sections uh, in the IT Act now like child pornography which was not there earlier. You know, any child pornography. Pornography in general, obscenity was covered by 67, section 67. Any, anybody who, I come across this question every time, is browsing I any other that. site? For interruption, please excuse me. You talk of London, but could a case be lost on the basis of IT law in India? Have you any experience of that? In India, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This was lodged with the uh, cyber crime police, the police, you know, the station at Delhi. Because you know, I have a personal experience. Yes. Uh, I will not name the person who had to suffer this. Yes. But uh, on the basis of uh, certain advertisement to the computers. Yes. Some appointments were advertised by some outside agency. This is a lucrative appointment right. in London. He made the application in the proper way. And the offer was made. Offer was to the tune of uh, nearly a hundred uh, million sterling pounds. Yes. And the guy happened to be a very brilliant guy of India in the field of science. But later on it was found that it was all fake. Now the case was lost in India at a very high level. After four months, the papers are with me, after four months, the high office of the police in India sent a very good letter, a very lovely letter, saying that they are incapable of doing it. No, uh, I, no, I would like to answer this please, question. Please have yes, 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 yes. Because when we are going to speak something on certain matters, <laughs> understand that there are people sitting here who know about it. Of course, yeah? of course. Just have peace, please. And later it was finally given to the police. To go to the police station and law the case in the police station. Where the policeman is completely inexperienced, incapable, I was coming to that. Of knowledge. I was coming to that. Let me explain uh, one time on the uh, on this podium. I graduate and postgraduate from University of Delhi and Second Delhi Good level university in India. But now still they are having the same old thing in mind that the policeman is still a very I think this is a contribution to me. I am the engine part to support you to say something. Will you like to Okay, we are not here. Sir, can we have No, I will be saying, okay, let me bring you a case study. Let me bring you a case study. Is it this case? Sir, I have been, I have been, uh, taking lessons, giving lessons to the police officers. On 8th of May, we have a conference where all the IG police officers, all the police officers dealing with the cyber crimes were present. And that conference was inaugurated by Chief Justice of India, the then Justice Balakrishnan. And entire India, the police officers dealing with the cyber crimes were present. Here is a need, you are right, here is a need to train the police officers and for that one person is incompetent, you yourself is competent, you organize a, any conference of the police officers anywhere in the country, I will be present, Mr. Karnika State will be present, everybody will be present and we will guide them how to deal with the cyber crime cases. No, okay. one minute. One minute. I have to say one thing.